This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1265, Tax Gain Harvesting and Free Ivy League Degree, both by the Mad Fientist of madfientist.com. And I'm Dan, I'm your host here on the show, and this is where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. Today's post is actually two posts coming to you from the Mad Fientist, so let's get right to them as we start optimizing your life. Tax Gain Harvesting by the Mad Fientist of madfientist.com Tax loss harvesting is a way to lower your income tax bill by selling investments that are currently trading for less than you bought them for and then using those losses to offset other capital gains or to reduce your ordinary taxable income. Tax gain harvesting is similar, but rather than selling your investments at a loss, you instead sell your investments after they have appreciated. You may be wondering how a potentially taxable event could be beneficial. I'll explain. Cost basis. When you buy an investment, the value of that investment at the time you bought it is called the cost basis. The cost basis is used when you eventually sell the investment to determine how much tax you need to pay on the investment. For example, if you purchase 1,000 shares of VTSAX for $43 per share, the cost basis for those 1,000 shares is $43. If those 1,000 shares are then sold for $40 per share, you would be able to book a $3 loss per share since there's a $3 difference between the cost basis and the selling price. The purpose of tax gain harvesting is to increase your cost basis so that when you eventually sell your investments, you have less capital gains taxes to pay in the event your investments appreciate or you have a larger loss to harvest if your investments instead go the other way. Example. Taking the example from the tax loss harvesting article, let's see how tax gain harvesting would improve things. Instead of doing nothing during the years his investments are increasing, the lab rat from the retire even earlier article decides to harvest his gains. Therefore, at the end of each year his investments rise, i.e. 2004, 2005, and 2006, he decides to sell and then immediately repurchase the same assets. As you'll recall from the tax loss harvesting article, the lab rat eventually harvested his losses at the end of 2008. In that article, the average cost basis for his investments at that time was $26.42 per share. So when he sold his investments at the end of 2008, he was able to book over $14,000 worth of losses. By tax gain harvesting in the years leading up to the crash, he would have been able to increase his average cost basis from $26.42 all the way up to $29.74 per share. That means when he harvested his losses at the end of 2008, rather than only book about $14,000 worth of losses, he'd lock in over $21,000 in losses instead. Those $21,000 of losses could then be used to lower his taxable income by $3,000 for the next seven years. Capital gains taxes. You may be wondering, won't he have to pay tax on those gains each year and won't that decrease the benefit of this strategy? Luckily, the answer in this case is no. Based on the lab rat's adjusted gross income, he's in the 0% tax bracket for qualified dividends and long-term capital gains. Therefore, the lab rat is able to sell his investments for a gain, repurchase the same investments at a higher cost basis, and pay $0 of tax for the privilege of doing so. Long-term capital gains. One thing you'll want to keep in mind is that you shouldn't sell investments that you've held for less than a year. If you do, you'll likely be hit with higher short-term capital gains rates. By waiting at least a year to sell your investments, you'll be able to pay a lower long-term capital gains tax rate, which is necessary to make this strategy worthwhile. Wash sale. There are rules about what you can purchase immediately after selling an investment for a loss. Luckily, these wash sale rules don't apply when selling an investment for a gain. Since you always pay tax when selling a gain, the tax just happens to be 0% in this situation, you can immediately buy the same asset again. Conclusion. For someone in the 0% tax bracket for qualified dividends and long-term capital gains, tax gain harvesting is a no-brainer. Just make sure that you don't sell so many investments that you end up getting bumped up to a higher tax bracket. And I've got another post for you in just a sec, but first, is your Wi-Fi struggling to keep up with your streaming, your work, gaming, video calling, and more? What about all at once? When you're connected to your world by Wi-Fi, be sure it's the best. 
Bring your Wi-Fi up to speed with Orbi Wi-Fi 6 from Netgear. Orbi Wi-Fi 6 is the best and latest in Wi-Fi. It covers your entire home with the fastest Wi-Fi for uninterrupted streaming, video calling, and working and learning from home on more devices than ever before in any part of the house. It's Wi-Fi perfectly engineered. Ready for the best Wi-Fi ever? Find out what makes Netgear America's number one choice for Wi-Fi at netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi. That's netgear.com slash best Wi-Fi and I've got that linked in this episode's description. Free Ivy League Degree by The Mad Fientist of madfientist.com I'm not talking about free courses on iTunes U or a free seminar that is open to the public, both of which I've utilized and are very valuable in their own right. I am talking about a free, walk-across-the-stage-wearing-a-cap-and-gown degree from a highly respected Ivy League institution. My free master's degree. I am currently a quarter of the way to getting a free master's degree from one of the best schools in the country, and I didn't have to spend months completing scholarship applications or applying for government grants to do it. Even better still, they are paying me a generous salary as I complete my studies. How is this possible? Did they find out that I am actually a Nobel Prize winning scientist and decide to give me a full scholarship? No. I simply became an employee at the institution and am utilizing their employee tuition benefits. I had hoped to someday go to graduate school, but the high price tag of most master's degree programs and the fact that additional qualifications aren't necessary to achieve financial independence made it very unlikely that I would ever pursue an additional degree. After moving to within 10 miles of an Ivy League college, however, I decided to investigate what benefits the institution provided to its employees. When I realized that it'd be possible to receive a free master's degree while working full-time, I decided to apply for a job there so that I could pursue a postgraduate degree. Utilize your final working years. This article is not actually about getting a free degree, however. It is about thinking about your personal goals and finding a way to use your final working years to help achieve those goals. If you are like me, you still have a few years before you become financially independent. Rather than unhappily grinding through those last few years, think about how you could use your time working to prepare you for your post-FI years. Are there new skills you'd like to learn that you plan on using after reaching financial independence? Why not get a new job that will help you develop those skills while also helping you towards FI by giving you a regular paycheck? Postpone FI? I took a pay cut when I moved to my current position, so the choice to switch jobs to pursue my master's degree actually pushed my FI date back a bit. Although I obviously wasn't happy to delay FI, the fact that I am learning and doing something I want to do while steadily marching towards FI is making these last few years of employment much more bearable. You just listened to the posts titled Tax Gain Harvesting and Free Ivy League Degree, both by the Mad Fientist of madfientist.com. And I'm going to leave it there for today. That is a wrap for another Wednesday show. Hope you are having a great one, and I'll be back tomorrow reading to you, and that's where your optimal life awaits.